In a previous video, I showed how you can get a muscle ID attribute from a name attribute. But what about when you have a more complex attribute, such as a path attribute, and you want to extract only a part of that attribute into the muscle ID attribute? Well, here's an example. So typically with Alembic or USD files, you will have a path attribute that describes the hierarchy of the geometry. And in this case, we can see that the muscle name is at the end of this path after all these forward slashes. And there's a, a handy function that we can use in VEX. So I've created an attribute wrangle and set it to run over primitives because we want the muscle ID to be a primitive attribute and the path attribute is already a primitive attribute too. So the way we can do this um, there's this function called the split path. So let me select it and press F1 to open up the help page for it. And you can see that it splits a string representing a path into the directory and name components. So it's typically used for a file path where to extract the file name and the directory or folder name. But in this case, it's very handy for extracting the muscle ID name from the path attribute. So something to bear in mind with this type of function compared to more typical functions is that it returns void, which means it doesn't return anything. So it doesn't actually return a result. Instead, what it does is it's going to modify some of the arguments, some of the input variables that go into your function. And you know which ones those are because they are denoted with an ampersand in the help documentation. So what that means is instead of using it solely as an input is it will actually output the result of the function into these pre-specified and therefore pre-existing variables or attributes. They can be either variables or attributes. And what you'll see here is I've actually used a variable here and an attribute here. So the full path is the first argument. That doesn't get changed. The directory is the second argument. And this one is a variable. And we know that because it doesn't have at in front of it declared this way and the name is going to be the muscle id attribute and that we have to declare in this way so now we've declared them ahead of time and now it will store the information in here but the difference between a variable and an attribute in vex is that an attribute will be passed down to be used for nodes downstream whereas Variables are only available for use within the rest of this attribute wrangle. So if you look here, you will see there's now a muscle ID attribute created. And if we look at it, it has nicely extracted that final name from the path attribute and saved it as the muscle ID. But what if the path attribute has, sometimes it maybe has the name and then followed by the name with shape at the end. So you can use the same code as before, which will then, um, let me just use two backslashes to comment out this final line. What you have now is your muscle ID will be El Sartoria shape or whatever the muscle name followed by shape. And then to remove that shape or any other word from your muscle id you can use muscle id equals replace and now the difference with the replace function compared to the split path function is the replace actually returns a value which is why we are saying muscle id equals that instead of just split path which doesn't have anything before it. we're not saving the result into anything it is saving its result into these so here we're saying replace the muscle id any instances of shape with an empty string, and then save that result into the muscle ID attribute. So now we have the result we want. Now, if you're very intimidated by all this VEX code, there is a way you can do it with another node called attribute string edit, but it won't work in all situations. So that's why I showed the VEX way too. But if you look at the path attribute, let's just look at the original one. We see that there's a pattern that's followed, namely that it's the name of the character and then muscle group, 
and then it's in this case we have the name of the muscle followed by the name of the muscle with shape at the end so we can say okay there's a pattern that this follows and let's just extract the name from that pattern so with attribute string edit we will specify which attribute we're looking at namely the path attribute and then in the editor tab we can put in the pattern that the path that's always going to be the same so that's going to be muscle minotaur muscle group and that the reason why this method wouldn't always work is if you have your higher if you have a lot of different groups in the hierarchy where there isn't a proper pattern like this but you could stack a bunch of these attribute string edits together for each instance of that if it makes sense but in any case so you have the part that is constant and shared between all of them then you put in a wild card so the asterisk here is known as a wild card and you put in put it in for each instance where the name you want is repeated because it's in this case it is repeated and then the shape will always be at the end and then you say change that pattern to just the name so now what you get if I just toggle this on and off you see it gets just the name um, whereas if I do it on the if I have the same thing but on my other path attribute that didn't have the repetition so here the path attribute just has the name once I can just remove this and just have that asterisk once and now we get what we want now the only thing that remains is that we have the name we want but it's still saved to the path attribute instead of to the muscle id attribute so now we can have an attribute rename and we can have that go from we want the primitive tab and we'd want the path to save to muscle id if you don't want to lose your path attribute now this has changed it but if you want to keep your original path attribute what you could do instead is do an attribute copy now this is very similar to what we did over here with the name what we can do is we can have the attribute string edit in a separate stream so the this still keeps the original path but now what we can do is we can save path here new name muscle whoops id and now we managed to keep the path attribute as well as that the muscle id attribute that's only if you want to um keep the path attribute if you don't care about the path attribute you can just do a rename from the path to muscle id so hopefully that will help you save time um, not having to worry about using the muscle id node to name your muscles if there are already names coming in with your geometry